We want to look into the main feature, the processing steps. So what are processing steps? In general, one can say a processing step is a step in the production of a print product other than regular printing. So this is an example here from the Gantt Working Group, a package object, obviously. And you see here on the left side, the layers of that PDF document. And indeed, the processing steps definition, which is an ISO standard, a new ISO standard from 2018, from last year, it defines which elements and how those elements shall be named and how to place those elements on, on layers. So we use the layer structure or in, in this standard, the, the layer structure of a PDF is used to, for example, put the design element on one layer. So you see this here. And another layer is, for example, for the dimensions, for the outer parts here. There are structural elements like, for example, the cutting lines, which are marked here, or the bleed, which are around uh, the object here. And all those elements are mostly non-printing elements, but are important for further processing. And in the past, before there was this processing steps standard, everybody has put them as a spot color with a different name inside the document. So for example, one has called them die line, the other embossing and whatever. And this could be completely different for each kind of object and for each kind of PDF. And that makes uh, the life very hard for processing along the processing chain. And with the new ISO standard for processing steps, all those names are defined names, which should be put on a separate layer and all those elements should not interact with each other. So that's the, the rule or the idea of the processing steps. And with that and appropriate software, one could make sure that only those elements that should be color converted are really color converted. And how that looks like in Zebra, I can show you here in this queue. I've created a queue that converts from ISO coded to PSO coded version three. And if I double click, I jump directly into the configuration and on the PDF tab, there is a new setting for the PDF layers. And as you can see here, I have defined already a few layers. For example, the design layer, which contains all the image elements that should be regularly converted. I just want to color convert this. Whereas for example, the legend or the dimensions or the structural elements should not be converted. So PDF layer rules can be defined by going to new and set a layer. So you can define a layer name here, or you could say invisible layers shall be either converted or not converted or even removed. Now, for example, here, my invisible layers, I've set a rule to remove those layers. And there is a section for the processing steps. And here you find all those typical names that we have seen in the PDF document previously, where you can define a certain processing stem with a defined name to be processed or not processed. Now, and with that, you can define your rules. There's another use case, for example, here in a PDF document from one of our partners. Here, there is a PDF document which has a few languages inside. There's a Spanish and a Catalan language inside. And you can switch between those languages. And here as well, you could say, okay, I create a rule that only the Spanish language shall be converted while the Catalan's language, for example, is removed from the converted document because in printing, I just need this one language and don't, don't need both languages. This is especially important if you flatten a file because flattening mostly destroys the layer structure. And while defining which layer shall be converted and shall be removed or not converted, you can make rules how to process that PDF correctly. And that's about the PDF layers here and how to define those layers. You can as well use copy and paste, for example, to make sure that the layer that is put on the last section here is put on top while the processing of each layer is from top to down. You know? And for each object, only one rule can be applied. So for example, here in that document, if you define that the Spanish language shall be converted and there's another rule afterwards that says the Spanish language shall be deleted, that can't work, of course. And the first rule, which says Spanish language to be converted, will be applied and the second one can't be applied or will not be applied, obviously. Important is as well, if you have a PDF document like this one, where there's transparency inside, 
and you want to flatten such a document and you define a rule, for example, that a certain element on a certain layer should not be converted, it could be that only those elements that are on the layer which are to be converted will be converted. And at the end, there is still transparency inside because on that certain layer, there could be transparency. You know? The same for spot colors. If you want all spot colors to be converted, but on a layer which you don't want to convert, like for example, the die line here. You know? So all the die line information, which are on certain layers, for example, on the dimension layer, there's the same a die line, for example, used. You know, if I disable that here, you see the die line here, is here as well. If this layer is retained, then obviously you will have that spot color still in the document, which is correct because you have set or you define the rule in PDF not to convert a certain layer, for example, dimensions layer. Just to keep that into mind, that when checking the file afterwards and you have applied transparency reduction, which is as well here, transparency flatting. If you apply that to the document, then you will um, have that situation.